This is Fred Beck from Fredericks Fighting, proudly sponsored by Empire Fight Stores. Today I'm very lucky joining the Great Britain Top Team Centre by Happy Winter. Alfie, it's good to catch up with you again. How was your holiday? It was lovely, mate. It was nice. Thank you. It was in Corfu. What did you, what did you do out there? Nothing. I, I'm, I'm usually very busy when I'm at home, so I just uh, chilled out and done, done nothing. Put my feet up, mate. That was it. Did that feel a bit weird? It's unnatural for me, because like, usually I can't sit still. But um, I've had a busy start to my year, so I, I knew it was it was sort of due that I had a little bit of a rest. Obviously, you have, obviously you're training the whole time. I remember hearing you overheard your training session here, and you're training every day, and some quite tough sessions. Did that feel really nice to get away from it all? Yeah, it is nice. It's nice to have a break. But do you know what? Yeah, I was out there, and I was looking at the beach, looking at the nice swimming pool and that, yeah. And I was thinking, I can't wait back to see. I can't wait to get back to see Kevin and just uh, get beasted on the pads and the bags. I just thought it would be lovely, yeah. Forget all this sunshine and that. I don't need it. But when you go away like that to a nice fancy place, obviously in Corfu in Greece, does that motivate you? Because you would have more holidays like that, the more successful you are in your boxing career. Definitely, definitely. Um, I've not been away much in my life, to be fair, so I never really think about it. But um, now I've come back off one, I'm thinking, quite it'd be nice to do that again sometime soon. But I can't have too many. Is it like a, do you think you make a tradition after every one of your fights you go on holiday? Nah, I can't, nah. I've criticised other people for doing that as well, so I definitely can't do that. <laughs> nah, definitely not. But um, I'll look to get away now and then for a little treat, let the body recover. Because you'll end up, like, I've come back off, the, I've come back off the holiday feeling energised. I feel refreshed. So now I'm going to bring that into my training, that sort of mood and, and energy, and then hit it harder than usual. Yeah, I was going to say, that's a bit of a silly question actually, because if you're fighting every six or eight weeks, mm. I guess a holiday after that would be would be quite nice. But just talking about training down here at the Top Team Centre, how's it been for you? Because it's quite a new place. This. Yeah, it's a great facility. Lucky to be here. We got all, 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 we, all that we need. Like it's lovely. We've got all the weight section, we've got the treadmills, obviously there's there's bags and stuff if I want to use them, but uh, that's not something I'll do around here. I, obviously I'm training with, with Kevin Essex, so all my boxing side of things I do there, and I'm here with Liam at Program to perform to do all the strength side of things. What's Liam like as a S&C coach? How's he been for you so far? Useless. No, <laughs> no he's all right. I like Liam. He's uh, Do you know what it is? Strength and conditioning isn't something that you're going to see immediate results from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're not going to see instant results. You're going to... Uh, you're going to build it over time and, and work towards me. So you you really know a good strength and conditioning coach after, after a long time. But what I'm seeing so far from Liam's quality and the little changes we've made has been class. He, he knows exactly what he's doing, his quality. I'll put his Instagram in the description alongside yours to check out Liam. And just talking about the training of Kevin Mitchell, obviously Kevin, former fighter, you're kind of one of the first people who's kind of professionally in training. How's he been so far as a coach? Yeah, he's been quality. He's been class to work with him. Um, I've said it many times in interviews before, like he's been there and done it all. So that is a privilege. Um, it's good because Kevin knows you can't be dead serious 100% of the time. Like you've got to bring a bit of something different now and then. So he knows how to have a laugh with the boys and he knows when to have it serious as well. And and that's that's what you appreciate now and then because you, you can't sustain being dead serious all the time. Like because you you'll burn out, do you know what I mean? You run out of time for it, but, and then uh, yeah, it, it's not too. It's a good atmosphere in the gym. Kevin always keeps it right where it should be. It's good. And that's a matchroom gym, obviously over in Essex. And you get to train alongside Joe Cordino, who's fighting for the world title next week or the week after. Connor Ben. I think we'll talk about Connor Ben first. You've been sparring Connor Ben. How's that gone for you? Yeah, good. I haven't sparred Connor for a little while. Obviously, his last fight he fought at Southpaw, so mm. he had specific sparring for that. But I've sparred with him previously to that, and uh, yeah, it's been great learning. Just learning through through different styles in the gym. Obviously, Connor's been in the gym for years as a pro, so he's an absolute athlete, he's a proper animal, so it's good to work with him and, and sort of see where I need to be athletically. It's very good. What do you think the most important thing you learned from sparring Connor Ben is? Um, it's hard to sort of say like and break it down to specifics. Um, you learn you learn loads of things and you learn as you go because you might pick up one thing and think, oh, I'm going to have a little go at that, I'm going to try doing this this time or... And then you take that away and be like, do you know what, that didn't work or, or that did work. And then you, you'd build from there. So it's hard to sort of specify exactly what you've learned from each spa. Yeah, certainly. Obviously, sparring them is uh, is very good. And obviously, you're down at their gym and you'll be doing, I've seen your Instagram stories early in the morning, six o'clock, seven o'clock. You're doing the sprints, you're doing all the running work. Do you come first? Where do you come in those running races? 
first always. No, nah, never. Um, what, what's good is like I can get I can get there to the top point. I'll be finishing first, but it's maintaining that and being consistent with your numbers, which is what was difficult to do. And that's that's what you build and takes time to develop. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm not I'm not far from the front anyway. But what's good is about them runs is you get an extra like five ten percent just from having someone. If you can hear someone oh, breathing, yeah, yeah. if you can hear someone breathing down your neck just behind you, yeah, that's going to give you that extra little bit. Oh, I've got to finish first, and if and if you're not that competitive in the runs, then you shouldn't be in the sport. Mm. I guess take a Joe, say Joe Cordina wins his world title, and you're like, oh yeah, I beat Joe Cordina the world champion today in the sprints. I guess it'll give you a little bit of moral boost. But I know this is the thing. That's our third interview or second interview that we've ever done, Alfie. If I was to ask you right now, where do you think you end up in five years' time? What do you think you say? World champion. I don't see myself doing anything less because like, I wouldn't be in the sport if I could see myself sort of underachieving. I think that's that's the goal and that's what we're driving towards. That's what we're going for. So I'm not scared to say it. I think that's the challenge and we're going, we're going for it. Welterweight world champion has got, nice, got a nice little ring to it. But if we just talk about the welterweights for just a second, obviously the massive fight that hopefully will be announced soon is Terence Crawford as Errol Spence Jr. How do you see that fight playing out? I've got Crawford for that one, yeah. Um, but yeah, like obviously, it's it's hard because they've both got so much to their game, and it all depends on the approach they bring on a night. Like you, like you can go and watch a million clips of them both, and then they could do something completely different. So, yeah, you, you can't say exactly what they're gonna do. It's just it's just gonna run. You have to just get the popcorn out and enjoy it, mate. Do you find when you watch fighters, which is your weight class, obviously welterweight, do you find you learn more watching them rather than lightweights or featherweights or cruiserweights? Um, no, nah, not necessarily. I feel like you can learn from every weight because there's so many different styles in each weight. So that jealous styles is what you learn from, like how to use, like how to use certain things against a, a specific style or, or or something else. Do you know what I mean? Like you're always gonna learn from every weight. Everyone's a boxer at the end of the day. Yeah, certainly. Well, I think that's pretty good today. We'll wrap it up there. But obviously, you got your next fight coming up. York Hall. How are you feeling about that? You haven't, you haven't had very long to rest since the last one. No, I had five days away and that's enough, definitely. But um, yeah, like I'm still driving for that 8-0 and o for the end of the year, see if we can get there. It's looking like a busy schedule if we're going to get there, but I don't mind that. I love boxing, I love fighting and having everyone behind me and, and bringing the crowd and that's what I love to do. Like, um, yeah, 2nd of July is at the York Hall. I've always dreamt of boxing at the York Hall, it's a dream. Yeah, there as an amateur, right? I've never boxed there, no, so um, massive thing for me. I'd, I'd love to tick that off. Anyone who's anyone is boxed there, if you know what I mean. So uh, it's it's definitely going to be something I've wanted to do for a long time. And are you co-main event in that in that in that card? I'm not sure of the setup, but what what the on uh, the poster you look quite high up. You weren't at the bottom. You're kind of at the top mm. in the big in the big picture. That's because I'm handsome, Fred. That's why. Nah, I don't mind it being up there. I'd obviously, dream is main events on on big venues and and on these massive stages. Like it'd be nice to headline the Madison Square Garden or something like that soon. But we'll see. That's on Dean White's show, I think you were co-main or third from the top, and that's only your third fight, so it looks, it looks quite promising. But if people want to buy tickets to that fight, well, how can they find you at? Anyone can get tickets. Just contact me on Instagram, Alfie Winter underscore. Just give me a message on there. Don't be worried about messaging me. Don't hesitate. Just get involved. Awesome. I'll put your, I'll put your Instagram in the description. Alfie, thanks for your time. Thank you, Fred. Cheers, mate.